Okay, let's move to the next tutorial. So, always related to flat play. So previously we, we, we were doing this flat play transition and now we're moving flat play but it's fully turbulent case. Okay, so we're not going to use the turbulent model, we're going to a standard model. So remember that we have correlation to, to this case so it can be validated easily. So here in the website also you can download the case but also you can download the, the instructions. So basically what we're going to do, there are two things that we're going, one thing that we, it, it is different. So first, previously, this is a 2D case that we're going to run, but see that we're doing it 3D, just to show you also that you can run 2D cases, but moving to 3D, given in the service dimension, just one cell. So these two faces would be, you, you can set them as symmetry planes or sym symmetry binary conditions. So just to show you that you can do it in this way. So you have used previously, let's say CFX or open phone, that is the approach that they, they take. Okay, so you have this option. But however, just to remind you also when you do this, it's also recommended that you take this uh, unit death. It's just one. Otherwise, when you start to normalize things, compute, compute coefficients, you, you need to get the right area, but doesn't matter. So the case, we're going to work with air. Let's take in compressible isothermal. These are the values of density. Uh, the bottom wall, so see that the bottom wall, this is divided into parts. Okay, so we have one part that corresponds to the slip. So we're going to let the flow to develop. And then we have the actual wall where we have this no slip. So the dimension from here, to here it is two meters. So we're going to aim for a Reynolds number of 10 million. So you just compute your velocity. You have the case predefined, so you will know it, but just do some, some basic math there and you will get it. And we're going to do sampling here, almost at the, uh, at the end. So the distance from the leading edge, okay, it will be this. And then we are going to start to sample velocity, kinetic energy, production, dissipation, velocity profiles, everything normalized, velocity profiles. And in this sampling also there is something, we are going to do something else that we haven't done so far, which is computing the fluid viscous stresses, fluid turbulent stresses, and fluid total stresses, okay? Uh, well, you're free, free, free to work low red or high red. Remember, low red means that you are re well resolving, high red well modeling. I will show you a result for the low red, but the high red is the same. Uh, I'm not going to run from, from scratch the case, just showing, I'm going to show you the, the solution. And remember, all this processing also, as we would like to compute the normalized velocity profile, also you will need to compute the friction uh, the fric okay, the friction coefficient, but also the, the, the friction velocity, we need to compute it for, for, for the normalized velocity profile. Uh, also, as you go to the NASA website, you will have, the, this is a standard validation case, so you have enough information here to compare different turbulence models. So let's go here, we have the fluent case, so here I already open it. So you see it's a full 3D case, when, when you launch fluent, remember to launch it 3D, okay? So let's go to the case setup, standard, models, shoes, whatever, whatever uh, turbulence model you want. So here we run with the default auction that Fluent is giving you, but also probably is the best one, the K Omega SST, but feel free to use any other model. Define your materials in the domain, also the domain also, and let's go boundary conditions, okay? So we have, um, what I would like to stress here is that the front and back see that there are symmetries. So from back is this one and from will be this one. So this is how you set up this kind of cases in influence. Then the bottom, you have, this is the wall. Then you have this surface that I set up this one as symmetry, but also you can set the wall and define the shear stresses as zero. And we have an inlet and an outlet. Okay, so give your boundary conditions, everything, and you are set to go. Uh, for reference values, uh, we set these values here, okay, so probably for, <laughs> can set here, okay, okay, we have one, okay, everything, okay, so uh, method, you set your method here, controls, okay, then reports definition, remember always uh, set uh, this one, so you will find what are your, 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 uh, best standard practice, but usually remember I, I compute uh, Y plus 
mass flow okay to check in the outer that everything is uh, stabilized but also you can compute the imbalance and velocity average so in this case i have a velocity average here i will monitor that quantity uh we know everything here we go here we can initialize okay and actually let me run this case because probably i think it will be a fast one and uh, calculation activities Okay, so nothing to set here. Okay, and then we run the calculation. So press calculate. So is the one also you can play around for different initialization types. Okay, so here I'm using a standard, which is the one you can go for the full multigrid. In this case, probably won't it won't make a large difference. It's probably this is, is the case, but some other complicated cases like the airfall that we did the trade and airfalls there, it makes uh, a large difference. So see that we have our residuals, okay, they are falling in a monotonic way. So see that nothing changes if you run this case uh, as a 2D, you won't see this equation and actually see that this C equation it is minus 20, it's very well converted. So there is you know, basically you're not computing this one. Okay, so see that area weight average, the outlet is already stabilized. Mass flow also is not oscillating anymore. And our worldwide plus is 0 0.2, so well resolving. And okay, so I think I can stop this case here. Okay, there is no problem. Uh, let me check the monitors because probably I think they are disabled. Actually, okay, minus five, so but it was almost converged there. So this is important because if you enable this full values minus three, probably will stop here like after fourth iteration. But after fourth iteration, you see that it's still your quantities are oscillated. So that's why I, I reduced this one, but also you can put a, a converge condition. So now we have a, a converge solution and we can do some plotting, okay? So in so I just plotted in this plane is 2D, okay? So you have here turbulence intensity, the velocity. So remember here, we're not computing transition. We don't have, we're not interested in there. So our boundary layer is fully turbulent, okay? So we are not going to able to see if we have this, when, when, when this transition happens, or if there are separation, laminar separation bubbles. And you can start to plot everything. So it's going to turbulence, uh, turbulence kinetic energy, and you have it there. So if you go to the wall, remember, and the viscous layer is zero, and you can plot all your quantities. Uh, something I would like to point out, I also look at that I run, and I when I was running, I was also computing the statistic for the, you can compute also statistic for steady flow. There is no problem. So usually you relate this one to an steady, but you can do it also for statistic. In this case, it makes no difference because we know that the, the solution is already steady, but when sometimes it might happen that your solution, the steady solution, you have some shedding and you want to uh, average that one, you can do it perfectly. So but the, our interest is computing these, these quantities and some other quantities. So we have different lines here where we're going to plot many things. So the line is created here, remember, and this is the distance. So I'm putting that line somewhere almost in the outlet. Have it here with that given height. And we can start to plot all, all our quantities there. So the, look at that. This one I'm plotting towards K, okay, the production actually, production of K. So remember that this production peaks in the buffer layer so later we're going to compare also with dissipation so we need to to change the range but see that we are using here the nor the distant normals to the wall in that line and we can go and plot all the quantities okay so this is dissipation rate it should be large in the viscous so layer okay and we move here and this is free wall shear stresses okay so see that you you have your correlation in function of the Reynolds number. So you can plot it here and you will see that it will fit very well. Then we move in this one and we have uh, in the Y coordinate. Ah, okay, so this is to compute the wall shear stresses. So here you have it at uh, Y coordinate and you have this quantity and you can use this wall shear stresses to compute your shear velocity or friction velocity, whatever you call it, and all your quantities that require the wall shear stresses. Then we move here this is the plot of velocity in that 
in that line, sampling line. Then we have here the shear stresses, the turbulent shear stresses, and this is a nice field. So see, remember that the turbulent stresses, you have it in the buffer layer. So close to the wall is zero, then you have it in the buffer layer, even go all to the outer layer, and then you reach the, 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 the outer flow, and you didn't have anything there in this case. So the next one would be the laminar shear stresses. So remember by definition, laminar shear stresses should be really large like the walls. So see that actually this is the wall shear stresses. And then when you go to the buffer layer, they reduce, okay? So these are the two quantities that are, we're going to compute, I'm going to show you. And then you can have the total. So the total is just the summation and see that you have this. So this is a very interesting plot. And then you have the shear velocity, okay? So I compute it there. So you need to compute, you have it here. You need to define it. And this final one will be Y plus and U plus. So you can compute that also in Fluence. So see that you have it here, your traditional profile that I hope you recognize. Remember that here needs to be logarithmic scale, okay? So viscous layer here, then you have the buffer layer up to 30, somewhere here probably. Then you have your log low and the overlap region okay and then it will go to the defect layer and the outer flow so remember that this is interesting case as well but very interesting because you can change your Reynolds number and you will see that the overlap layer it will change the dimension okay it will become a smaller as you reduce your Reynolds number okay so the interesting thing is that let's see how to compute those new quantities and you compute here you go in custom field functions Okay, you put new and you can compute it, but let's see here manage and see the quantities that we, that I compute. So we're interested in this one, in shear stress. So the shear stress, we can compute it in this way. You can compute the strain rate magnitude times the laminar viscosity. So the strain rate magnitude will be the U dy, but here we're taking all the derivatives, but the wall is the U dy. Okay, that quantity, you have it available. So let me go here. And you have it here in derivative and here you have the strain rate okay so this is your strain rate and you have all the other derivatives if you want to use the single derivative so this is how we compute manage the laminar then the turbulent will be exactly the same so you have a strain rate magnitude and times the turbulent viscosity you access that in your calculator here to define that then the total stress it will be this one plus this one or you can have the visco the effective viscosity then shear velocity so you compute your wall shear and density and you have your shear velocity y plus normal so y plus normal density y this is the shear velocity at the wall in that point divided the one so this shear velocity in this case is non-uniform it's local in the whole domain. Here, when I plot this one, I est I get the I got the value in that precise point. Okay, so do not put here shear velocity because I think you, you will get zero. You need to get in the position where you are going to plot that line. You get that shear velocity, and then u plus you have it here. So velocity divided velocity tangential to the wall. Okay, sometimes okay this is also sometimes. It is okay to, to put magnitude, but probably should be properly should be the tangential to the wall. But magnitude won't make much difference when you have uh, surfaces with curvature and that stuff. And divided shear velocity. So this is how you compute those new quantities. So here I just playing with some other quantities. Okay, so you'll see. So just to show you that one for new. So for instance, you want shear velocity, you go here, derivative strain rate select times what you want the viscosity remember that is properties and you put your molecular below, uh, viscosity if you want to use the turbulent viscosity remember that you access that here and you should have it here viscosity rate okay turbulent viscosity okay so this is how you plot these quantities uh so this is you know, this is a very interesting case you can do the, all these plots so remember when we talk about the the random stress bug check and to run a kinetic energy bug check you can get get all those quantities here so let me go here and we have the data source and we can plot here i will plot the uh, the information that i have in this plot and in this plot which correspond to turbulent kinetic dissipation energy and production of k 
And remember from the theory that we were telling that the red one, well, we don't have the name there, but okay, by, the, by looking at this result, you will know that the red one will be K. We know that in the viscous tube layer, at the wall, K is zero. So see here that it's going to zero. Then it peaks somewhere in your boundary layer and somewhere will be in the buffer layer. So we have here the, the Y plus, so we can put it here instead of the position. And then we have the dissipation that also it is large in the viscous layer and everything balanced here. So you see that it's in equilibrium. So you go to the core, they're kind of, they, 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 they balance, they, they, they are in equilibrium. So let's change this scale. Instead of using this one, let's use the Y plus so I can go here. Deselect this one, so I want in that axis Y plus normal. Okay, it should be here. Um, bam, 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 bam. Cost. Uh, let me put. Oh, okay, and the wrong one, so it should be this one. Uh, okay, bam, let me put here. Here. Okay, and the second one will be the same. Uh, pa, 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 okay, here. And we'll go back in the data sources and let's replot. Okay, remove, remove. I need to add it again. Bam, bam, okay. Uh, access, I think, out to range. Okay, and um, let's change the range here so it will be go from zero. Let's put 100. So now I'm plotting in normalized voltage and units, and here we have it. So see that it's easy to understand when you put in these Y plus units. So see that in the viscous, in the buffer layer, see that kinetic, turning kinetic energy peaks. And then also it's very large in the viscous layer, the dissipation rate. So see that it's larger, much, much larger than the production. Okay, so I think this is all for this case. Uh, then the other thing that you can do, so we run it here using the uh, the wall resolving, you can run using the wall modeling approach. In the wall modeling approach, you will pit your set, you, you will put yourself in Y plus higher than 30. So all this information, you, you don't have it. And you know how it is computed. We add, we address that in the theory when we, we, we talk about uh, wall modeling. Okay, so we, we basically by using the, the correlation for the log load, we are bridging the information that is here, bridging with that correlation, and then we can keep com computing. So that's all for this case. See you next tutorial. Bye.